Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes and I am back ready to reinstall. We did a video on uninstalling this control box. It's a Mercury. Sometimes it'll say Quicksilver on it. it might be the exact same box just with a Quicksilver brand. Still a Mercury product. I need to put this in. This is a standard console from pontoonstuff.com. Remember that you can use our promo code at checkout to save 5% off all your purchases at pontoonstuff.com. But this console, it's their standard console. It's a little smaller profile uh, in terms of width wise. So on an eight foot wide boat, we do prefer this width of a console. And it's a little bit snug to add the binnacle mount, but it works well. We've done it on a lot of boats. So what I'm gonna do first, I have my control box, everything's there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that bezel, and that little black cover, right off. Remember that this round cutout is going to face inward because that's where your shift lever is. From here, I'm gonna push this as far over as I possibly can uh, in order to give myself room with the steering wheel and everything else. Also, I'm gonna make sure I don't install, maybe I could put a stereo or something here, chargers maybe, but I'm putting my switch panel and my stereo over on this side just to leave extra space I need to do gauges I'll typically do them above the steering wheel uh, this one will get a fuel gauge but I like to go ahead and slide my binnacle all the way over to the right you have a little bit of a ridge here that faces inset so we want to make sure we're not riding up on the ridge at an angle I'm gonna slide it over put a little bit of pressure down and when I get in a spot where I know it's gonna sit nice and flush what I'm gonna need to do is trace this out so in this case there's still a little bit of foam left in because we need to have, there's a little U cut out. So I'm gonna make sure that when I make my cut, I take that into account. With that piece cut out, maybe yours is already cut out. Either way, I'm gonna get it back in that position. And then I'm gonna trace along the inside of this, including this little U shape here. From there, it is a pretty tight squeeze. So we're gonna make sure that we cut on the inside of the line first. Then we can make sure by dropping in our control box and everything fits. Uh, but I don't want to cut too big and then not have room for these holes for my hardware because on this one, we are going to through bolt it. This isn't fiberglass with plywood behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a through bolt on this, but I'm going to cut this out with my Dremel tool. This is a multi-cutting bit. It cuts wood, uh, thin aluminum, does really well through this rotor molded plastic for speakers, all this stuff was cut out with this. And as long as you keep two hands on it and you go nice and slow, it makes a really nice cut. We got that whole cut. And again, like I said, I like to go ahead and just slide this in to make sure the general rule is we can always cut more away. I haven't figured a way how to add stuff back to your console. So start small, you can always make it bigger. And I can already tell that it's a really snug fit. So I'm just going to take a little bit more away. And in this case, because I don't want to push too far to the outside to where I must stay on this ridge, I'm just going to take a teeny bit away here. And even if you looked close, you'd see that I left some of that blue line all the way around. I always start there. I can always take a little bit more if I need to. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean this up, make it a little bit bigger, and then we'll try to slide it in again. We're still a little snug. Just keep working it until I get a good snug fit where it can slide all the way in. And there we go. I like how that fits in there. It's real snug. Everything's gonna fit. We got some room to work on the sides. So this is gonna work really well. This is gonna come back out now until I get everything else that I want installed and we get the console up on the boat because what I need to do next is run my wiring and my shift throttle cables up through that hole. I'll install the cables back into the control box. Then I can slide it in and we'll through bolt it. One of those big things and I'll remind you again is make sure that whatever is going through that hole goes through this first. So I'll run my cables and everything up through this. So this is in place. The last thing you wanna do is get everything installed and then forget, leave this out and then have to take everything back out, put them back through here 
so it's installed properly. So this is gonna take a little break for a minute until I get the console up and installed on the boat. We are up in the boat. We've got our switch panel, stereo, steering started. I've still got a couple gauges to put in, but I'm ready to reinstall that control box. Remember that first step, make sure you put this bezel on first or at least run the cables through it so you don't forget that step. I've been there, I've done that, it's not fun. I've got my shift throttle cables run up through. I gave myself a little slack here. So I'm gonna slide this on, doesn't matter. It's just sitting on there resting for now. That's all we need. I'm gonna get myself a little stool here. Since I haven't put the captain's chair in yet, we'll keep our cover up top. And then if you remember, We've got to pull these bottom two screws first so we can get this uh, back plate off. I've got that back plate off. We'll set this off to the side. I've got that T marked on this tab and it's back in the same hole that it was in. The T is for throttle. So I know I, the other way to, if I didn't label these, but I did, we have a T for throttle, S for shift. It makes it so much easier. But if you didn't label them, the way that a mechanic explained it to me is your shift cable is going to be about midway, being that it's in neutral. I left the motor in neutral. Your throttle cable is either going to be way extended or way short, because if it's a push to open or a pull to open, that's going to dictate. So that's why this is that throttle because it's pulled all the way in. This is going to pull to advance the throttle. And if it was a push to advance the throttle, this would be sticking way out here. That's just a way to remember it, but I labeled it. So we're good to go. There's a little twist to your cables. You'll notice that it doesn't matter. There's not a right or wrong way uh, for that twist to apply. So don't be worried about cranking on your cables or ruining them by fighting that rotation or that twist, that's totally normal. I'm gonna back that off just so I can open this space up. And if you look on here, there's that little tab by the end of my finger, and that's what's gonna go through the end of my throttle cable. And now I'm gonna push it down into that hole. And then when it's in that hole, like so, if you can see that, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. My throttle cable is then in, once I snug this up. Then we're gonna move on to our shift cable. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and advance the throttle. So when I do that, I just, even though there's no shift cable hooked up, I still push this black button in, and that's gonna help me move it to where I can see that nut and post right there, that guy. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, I'm gonna expose that. Now I can get my socket in there to loosen it. And I'm just gonna, again, I explained this in the last video. We're gonna try not to take that nut all the way off because it is a challenge to get it back on. Now I can advance the throttle back down. I guess reduce the throttle back down. I'll free up that shift post and it was on the outer hole. It's where I left it. So on this, I'm gonna get that shift cable down in. And this one's a little bit trickier just cause I don't I have a lot less room to work with. It's kind of down in there. So I'm gonna do my best to show you without, ooh, without covering it all up. And then you can see here that cable just wants to go halfway. It'd be way too easy if it just laid flat for me. I'm going to line it up on the cable, and if it's easier for you to just take that bullet out, or that barrel out, you can do that, and just get it through your cable first. That's the route that I'm going to take here. I had to fight that. If you had a pair of pliers just holding on here to keep it from twisting, it would certainly make your life easier. But now I've got it through the post, I can line that barrel up, and let that slide down. And then I can go ahead and insert the post back into the shift mechanism. Don't forget, if you put that uh, barrel back in, I need to remove that. 
so that I can slide my shift cable all the way down home where it needs to go. That barrel will sit back on top. I had to manipulate the plate, the shift plate on this side a little bit to get that to drop right where it needed to be. With my shift cable and throttle cable, the barrel's in. I've got my pin in here, but I need to advance the throttle one more time. Okay, so I advanced my throttle. Now I can drop that socket back in. And remember, you don't want to dry shift this, meaning I don't want to try to jam this into forward or reverse without the motor running or somebody back there spinning the prop. So I know there's an urge to want to test this, but just wait or have somebody go back and spin the prop while you shift it. I got a dog hair on my finger with all that grease. Keep a rag on hand. It's going to make your life a lot easier. I don't have one and my hands are a mess. So I did have to. It's funny because usually these go right back together, but you got to see me struggle a bit with getting this pin back in place on the shift cable. I had to manipulate this side of the shift mechanism to get that to line right back up. So it may, they're old cables. I might have to make an adjustment back at the motor because I can't adjust my shift or my throttle tension in position on the control box. I need to do that back at the motor. With those in place, everything tightened down, we're ready to put that back plate back on. That slides into position. Our little retention piece is slide into place. And then those two machine screws are gonna hold it in. Like to hand tighten those just to finish them and that is it for the guts of the control box we're now ready to put it into the helm remember you've got your trim and tilt harness right here that red blue and green wire and then we've got our neutral safety wires here in this video i'm not going to go in depth in talking about reconnecting those hopefully you labeled them uh, from when you disconnected and you can simply plug and play back in what I am going to tell you to do to save yourself some headache is run these through the bezel because they got to go through that to go through the hole and everything fit. If those run through. We'll get that trim tilt harness lined up. There's a little groove for it. So it lays flat. I like to slide that bezel right up. And then we're ready to slide our control box into position. I'm gonna make sure that my shift throttle cables are pushed down into the hole. We want a nice soft bend as they go down, but sometimes if there's some tension or pushing back, it's hard to get it to seat just right. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick, and then I'm gonna make sure that my shift throttle cables are pulled down going into the deck so there's no pushback on the control box. We're gonna be using 3 8 inch stainless steel machine screws with a nylock and a washer on the back to hold this in place. I prefer to do that with these rotor molded plastic consoles if it was fiberglass like this one came out of we could just screw it back in with the same screws that came out i have four holes all i'm going to do is push it in get it exactly where i want it that looks pretty darn good and what i like to do is just drill a couple holes first to make sure that we're lined up and it holds the position that I have it in. With those two in, I know it can't move, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill my other two holes. And then I can drive my machine screws in to those holes as well. And then we're gonna just get behind it. I'm gonna have wonderful Miss Corey tighten from the top. I'll hold a wrench on the back and we'll get those snug down again. We're using that stainless washer and a nylock nut. The wonderful Miss Corey and I just tighten everything down. That's really solid. Uh, even though it's a rotor molded plastic console, this is the standard from pontoonstuff.com. It really secures down well if you do it right. Last piece is putting this cover plate back on. 
what we have is a catch on the bottom and then we have a catch for the circular tab on the top. So what I like to do is hook the bottom in first. I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up. This round disc can move and that closes the gap. So I'm going to make sure that's lined up well. Hook the bottom in first and then you can hear it and feel it click in. Super solid. We've got our range of motion forward as well as backwards. I'm not dry shifting. I'm pushing that throttle only to move it forward and back. That last piece, I know a lot of people wonder about this. Will my steering wheel work? There's plenty of room here to drive, to shift, to go to reverse. Plenty of space on this to steer and everything with your control box mounted side by side with your steering wheel on the standard console. I've been asked that a lot and it obviously works. The only things I have left to do are put my gauges in. I'll put a key switch in, typically down on this flat panel. We'll keep it close to the shift throttle just because you can turn the key, move quick if you need to. That is reinstalling this Mercury. Again, it might be labeled a Quicksilver on your boat, but that's how we reinstall it into a new console from pontoonstuff.com. Please subscribe to our channel, comment, tell me how it went on your project when you get around to doing it. Let me know if this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.